I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine, entrepreneur and instructor of the project. Welcome to another episode of the MDK Wives Show. This is where I interview the wives of previous project graduates. If you don't know about the project, it's a 75 hour personal development program for men looking to level up in business and life so they can become even better husbands, fathers, leaders, and men. Today, I will have a very special guest. I want to welcome Wendy Fisher. Thanks for joining me on the show today on the MDK Wives. How's everything going? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. That's awesome. Appreciate you coming on to the show. Her husband, David Fisher, graduated about six months ago of class 006. So we're going to take a deep dive into that. We're going to have a good old time talking a whole bunch of crap about him. And <laughs> he can't do anything about it. So yep. let's just let's just jump right into it, Wendy. So how did you first hear about the project? Um, he was doing a little bit of his own self-development, probably a year and a half, two years ago. And um, he was looking into a franchise with Fit Body Boot Camp. And obviously, he discovered Bedros and um, was digging a little deeper and, and realized that he had this other project, the Modern Day Night Project. And he was immediately intrigued. So since, I, I don't know how long the project's been around, um, but since whenever he discovered it, he has been talking about it, meaning Dave. Um, it was always like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And so at, you know, at one point I was like, if you're going to do this, we need to do this because you've been talking about it long enough. And um, the funny thing with him is he was looking into the class after him. So 007. And I, I feel like that might have been January, February time frame. Mm -hmm. And so he and at that same time, we were launching, finally launching our franchise and um like, so we're in the build out phase, November, December, January, we're opening. So he's like, yeah, I'll try and go in like February. I'm like, are you nuts? Like we're launching a business. Like, I don't know how this is going to work. So somehow he went online, filled, filled out a form or a questionnaire and like immediately got a call from instructor, um, instructor Ray. And it turned into this thing. And the next thing I know, my husband is asking me if he can go to 006. And that starts in three weeks. And I was like, wow. okay. <laughs> so I was like, well, I guess if you're going to do it, we're not quite open yet. Now's the time to do it. Um, but I'm, I'm excited that he did it when he did it because he has been you know, and we'll talk about this later, but that is what actually catapulted a lot of our, I believe, our initial success um, in our business when we opened in January. So timing is everything. Yeah. So first off, a couple of things there. So first, how old is Dave? Dave, at the time he was doing the project, was 51. So he's 51 years old. And on three weeks notice, I mean, he was talking about it for a while before that, but until you make that commitment, all that doesn't matter. You're not really preparing for it. So exactly. three weeks notice, he decides his crazy ass is going to come and f fly out here and do the project at the same time that you're opening up a fitness franchise during lockdowns and coronaviruses and all this other crap. That is a lot all going on at once. What were your thoughts on this about, you know, going on at the same time? And first off, open up. I mean, I congratulate you on the, the fitness business during this time. That takes that takes some guts. So that's freaking awesome to hear. Yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts about, you know, doing all this at the same time, at, at, especially this time and the, these times that we're in these days? So um, I had a lot of thoughts, um, <laughs> but, you know, we were also remote learning with our children. We have um, a 12 year old and um, almost nine year old. So there was a lot going on at home with them, social, emotionally. They weren't in school. They weren't seeing their friends. So that was on me, um, you know, opening the business and making sure we were moving forward. That was on me. Um, you know, just so many life events that happen, you know, all right in that same time. And he's mm -hmm. like, Hey, I got to step out for a minute. And I was like, what? But, um, honestly, because he had been talking about it for so long, I, I knew that if it was like a sign, this was the time to do it. And if he didn't do it, like right when, um, instructor Ray called and was like, Hey, we can fit you in. I knew if he didn't do it it would be postponed. Like it, it would be like, it might not happen. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because now we're opening the business and he would come up with an excuse or I would come up with the excuse yeah. for him. But, 
Um, I think because it was only three weeks, neither one of us had a lot of time to process that. It was like, just get him on the plane. See you later. <laughs> and, that, awesome. and that was it. And I'm so, so glad that he did it. That's awesome. So when he was three weeks away, did he already sign up and then told you that he signed up or how did, how did that go? Did he, did you talk about first and then he signed up? How did that play out? So, you know, he had been talking to me about the project for a while and, you know, showing me the sizzle reels, as he likes to say, and, um, or maybe that's a term he learned from you guys. I don't know, but he was showing me a bunch of the videos and some of the content around it. Mm -hmm. And knowing my husband, I knew that this was a fit for him physically. I, I knew that he could, I, I knew that he could do the 75 hours. It was the mental piece that I was like, if he gets out of this, what I hope he's going to get out of it based on what I'm watching and what I'm reading and what he's sharing with me, then this is going to be a win. Um, so yeah. Wait, what was the first part of your question? Well, no, no, let's just go, let's just ride that. Let's just dig deeper into that since we're on it. What, what were the things you were hoping he would get out of it? What were the areas that you, in your head, whether you communicated it to him or not, you're like, yeah, you need this, 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 and this. What, what are those things that you were hoping he would get out of it personally? Yeah. So personally, you know, for Dave, I've, um, you know, we've been married for, I don't know, 14 years, a long time. And um, for me, I always saw him tie his self-worth to like a, a paycheck. Like I'm not making enough money. I'm not doing right by the family. And so he was just tying his self-worth into that when that shouldn't have been the case. Cause you know, I'm working like we're a team. We really are a team. And so I would see him do that. I would see him, you know, go for a goal, hit that ceiling, but not, or the wall, if you will, and not be able to bust through that wall. Like he really wanted to climb over the wall, but like, I knew that he was going to have to bust through it. So my personal self-development journey, probably it started prior to him. So he, like, I could already see how it would benefit him mm -hmm. um, to go um, versus like not doing it. So I really wanted him to learn how to um, bust through the wall um, and, and mentally know that like it's worth it. What's on the other side is worth it. You got to work really freaking hard for it. Right. And not take the easy way and just say, well, I'll, I'm not going to do that right now. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so just, um, you know, his, um, growing up, like he had to move a million times as a kid, didn't necessarily have the most stable family life. Um, you know, didn't necessarily have, you know, the best father figure in his life. Mm. And, you know, my family, he was just like, wow, because we live near my family, we're pretty tight. And he just was like, wow, like your family is just, they're tight. You know, we, you know, we're not perfect by any mm -hmm. means, but in comparison to what, um, you know, what he grew up with, I, I just, he never felt like, I don't know, valid. I don't know if valued is the right word, but he never felt any stability. Um, and, you know, I just wanted him to know that he, he fits in. He, you know, he needed to just find his people, whoever those people are, aside from me, like whoever is going to give him that stability and that core of, you know, that just, I don't know, his community, his community. That's what he needed to find. And, and I could see that, you know, watching all of the videos and reading that um, about the project. And so I just knew that this would just be a starting point for him. Right. So, yeah. So he was looking for his people and that's, and he's a Marine as well, right? Yes. Yes. And he even is. after that still, I think, cause you're a Marine as a young kid kind of, right. You're just easily moldable. You just go along with whatever you're told where to be, what time now in the real world, it's, it's a real game. It's not just, you know, you're not just playing soldier anymore. It's like you have a family career, kids, right. Right. Responsibility. So you, it's, it's hard to, find your people in that setting. So it, it sounds like that was part of his journey, which, which you, you realized that he, he needed. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, and the other piece of it, which was big too, is emotional piece, right? So like for him, his emotions can be very up and down, you know, especially and that's human nature and all of us. Um, but now when you're parenting kids, 
you know, we're just, you know, we're just trying to do right by our kids, right? So we're trying to control our emotions and not be, you know, doing this and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, leveling up in the wrong way when it comes to communication. Um, So for him, you know, especially raising two boys, right? I think it's like, there's this certain, like, I don't know, thing that men have when they're raising boys that, you know, you got to be tough on them. You got to be, um, you know, I don't know if unforgiving is the right word, but there's just, it's different than me raising the boys. Right. So, yeah. So for him or for me, what I, what I observed with him is just like, if we could just level out sort of the emotions in the house, I didn't know what that looked like at the time. But fast forward, com- him coming home from the project, I can see, um, and I'm not going to get the terminology right, but you want to stay in the green zone. Um, and he works really, really hard at that. So to be a better dad for the boys. That's so, so. pretty awesome that you even know the terms and the colors. And if you could see it, I have on my chalkboard right here. I, it's, I can't turn the computer, but it literally says in chalk, stay in the green. And I look at that all day. That's and, and the way you're moving your hand, that's exactly one of the, the evolutions that we do is all about that emotional discipline. So that is, that's awesome that he's even spreading it out to his team. Like my kids know the same thing, the, the red, the blue, and they know when I'm getting pissed off, they'll be like, daddy, you're getting in the red. And they'll just put me in my place. And it's like, yeah, they call it. And, that, and isn't that wonderful? Like we're leading by example. And him going through this, Dave going through this makes me go through it at some level, right? So like he can look at me and be like, mm-mm. Like, I can see where you're going with this. Don't do it. And vice versa, you know, him telling me what it was like while he was at the project and in the after, I can be like, no, that's not going to work. You're, you're getting, I don't say red. I just, I say other things like stop being a jerk or whatever, but like, (laughs) but yeah, he, um, yeah, that, that piece has been huge. That piece has been huge. So at the end of it, I can't imagine him not doing it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I like your way of saying it better. Forget about saying the red. Stop being an ass. I like that better. Yeah. More politically yeah. <laughs> correct way of doing it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. So let's let's talk about when he first shows back up home. Like this is only 75 hours. People say, how much can someone possibly change in 75 hours? First, there is a, a period before where that you made that commitment. You start thinking a little differently before you get there. But during that 75 hours, and I've seen it time and time again, we just had a class graduate this Friday and Literally, men are being reborn. They are completely transforming in, in three days. It's it's freaking amazing. So he shows back up at home. What is the first uh, things that you immediately notice immediately when he shows back at home, like day one, minute one? How, how was that experience? Well, I'll back that up. So after he was done his 75 hours, he went back to the hotel or wherever he was staying and he was finally able to call. Like we weren't able to talk to him obviously for 75 hours. So that was an adjustment for the kids, but, um, he called and I could just tell in the tone of his voice, obviously he was exhausted, but just the tone of his voice of like, I just made it through that. And I didn't know, like, you know, obviously I, I was kind of face stock, Facebook stalking you guys or Instagram stalking, like, cause I just needed to know that yeah. he was moving forward and it's not that I ever thought that he couldn't do it. It was more like, I just had to know, you know, it was probably mm-hmm. my own anxiety, but like, sure. so I just knew just by his tone of voice when he made that initial call that something had changed, but he was too tired to, in a positive way. So he was tired. Um, and then eventually he gets home and I just, he looked like hell, first of all, um, <laughs> he was pretty beat up. And, you know, he was just like proud, like, like he was proud of himself for, um, finishing or finishing. Yeah. And getting through it. But most importantly is he recognized right away that that was just the start of this journey, like his, his new journey. Um, so to your point, like being reborn, I guess, um, is a good is a good way to say it. Like he definitely was just like, this is just the beginning and I need to stick to this. Like, cause it's all great. Like you're coming home, you're feeling mm-hmm. pumped, you're fe- exhausted, but pumped. Um, like you're ready to conquer the world. And then, you know, Monday comes. So what are you going to do on Monday? So for him, 
um, you know, one of the first things that he did right away was make this shadow box of just, um, it's basically trinkets from his, you know, his day. He's got his axe in there. He's got, you know, his t-shirt in there, one of his t-shirts, which is not washed. Um, and the, the one that I like the most is the $20 bill. And um, you could probably explain the $20 bill, you know, component more than I can. But, it, you know, when he told me about it, I was like, oh, that's like your cab money if you didn't want to do it. And he's like, yeah, pretty much. And Basically. I was like, well, shit, that needs to go in there. It's all muddy and gross. And like, I was like, that is like really powerful. Like, there's no, there's no cab free. Like, you could just got to do it. Like, just mm -hmm. do it. So it sits in, this sits in our office. I'm in my office. And we as a family look at it every day. I mean, we're not like coming in and like, hey, there's the, you know, but it's a reminder, especially for him. Um, you know, like, it's just a constant reminder that he needs to do the work. That's freaking awesome. That's what, that's what we say. You, you get through the, the project in 75 hours, that's just the price of admission. That's just the starting point. Then you have to re-earn that title of being a modern night literally every single day for the rest of your life. But yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, the $20 bill is obviously no one really pays, gets a cab anymore, right? they Uber from their phone, but it's symbolic of if you still have your $20, means you didn't quit, you didn't need to be, you know, to get a ride home. So it's really more symbolism. So that's awesome that you can put that in there. I never would have thought about that. I didn't see that in MC say it. Now that I see it on there, that's, that is yeah, so cool. I'll show you. Hold on. See if I can get closer without anybody getting dizzy. Oh, can you see it? Oh. Yeah, that's awesome. It might be weird. It might be weird. All right. But anyway, you get the gist. It's all yeah. in there. Um, he, he, it was one of the first things he did when he got home. And um, so we're excited about that. So I think that's so cool that on the phone, literally, he just finished minutes ago, and that's freaking amazing. And you said it, it gave me chills, and I'm not the mushy, mushy kind of guy, but it gave me chills when you said you could just hear in his voice that something was different, something changed. That is, that's just, that's freaking amazing. And yeah, I don't want to say that he was crying, because he'll get pissed at me if I said he was crying. Don't ever kill his reputation but, like that. Don't ever say right, that. Right, right. So I'm going to say he was misty. I think he was misty. He had yeah. some probably a little dirt caught his eyes from the training. That's all it is. Probably, probably. Right. That's why I tell the guys when we first secure them and they're standing in line and we we ring the bell, meaning it's the secured class and they all graduated. That's something I tell them is that if you see my eyes a little watery, it's just because my contact lens is a little dry. I haven't slept in 75 hours. That's all it is. I don't want to kill my own yeah. reputation. But that, yeah. that's that's freaking awesome. All right. So so you saw an immediate change when he came home, even on, on the phone before he came home. But let's talk about now six months later, because as you mentioned, like people go to these workshops, these motivational things, they jump up and down and they high five people and they give hugs and they scream like and, and roar like a lion at some of these workshops and stuff. And Monday, they're full of fire and Tuesday, they're back to their lame, mediocre lives and, and nothing changed. So let's talk about now six months down the line. He was there in November. We're now in, in April. So how is thing, how are things now six months later? Has that is that fire still there? Is that change still there? Is that, how are things going now and, and what's happened in those six months? Yeah. So, um, in the six months we launched a business, um, and you know, he brings that sort of energy and fire that we need into the business as a leader. Um, you know, I think one of his big takeaways from the project, um, was that he was struggling with his leadership and, and he had to face it during his 75 hours. And so as a result of that, um, he was able to take tools that he learned in the project and sort of implement them in our business. And I think that that is, that has been huge. And that is like one of the things that has been consistent. Um, he has maintained, you know, this sort of green zone. Um, it's not very often he gets flustered. Um, mm -hmm. he doesn't shut down like um, emotionally, I guess, meaning, you know, sometimes we could be having an argument about something and all of a sudden he's like, well, I don't care. And that's not the case now. It's like, cause that was his easy way of not mm -hmm. dealing. Right. And, um, I'm a little opposite from that. So I'm like, no, we're going to deal with this. And, and, but it was difficult to have that, those conversations with him where now I feel like he's more receptive to the feedback I'm giving him as, um, you know, as a parent, um, you know, as a business owner, like we are definitely partners in every aspect of our life, you know, between running the business, parenting and, and, and being husband and wife, like, 
So it's been, um, it's been nice in that, um, that line of communication is there that I wouldn't say it wasn't necessarily not there, but it's better. It's better. Mm -hmm. Um, so he does work hard at that. Um, he, like I said, he, um, he's really found a great community of guys. Um, and you know, every once in a while I'll, I'll hear someone's voice and I'll be like, what are you listening to? And he's like, Oh, the, you know, so-and-so where, you know, in the, um, I don't know, you guys have a Facebook group or whatever. And it's like this accountability group, right? So every once in a while, it sounds like you guys check in and I am not involved with a Facebook group. I'm not like going in there, but, but every once in a while I'll, I'll hear it. And it, it, so to me, it's nice because I really feel like he's found a community of people that are going to hold him accountable in, in whatever ways that you guys do that. Um, you know, he went back out to, was it Vegas to yeah, meet up Vegas. with you guys? Like, a, yeah. you know, and he was so excited to just like, like genuinely excited. So he's just, you know, when you move around a lot as a kid, you don't get to maintain relationships mm -hmm. um, or it's hard or, you know, whatever. So he's never really had that, um, you know, the, those old friendships, you know, and I feel like when he talks about you guys, it's like, you guys did so much in like 75 hours in that bonding and that bond has continued and continues to grow. And he's just, he's found some footing there. So some stability. And mm -hmm. I, and I think that that helps. Right. So, um, so that's been awesome. He, um, yeah, what else? He just, he allows me, like I said, to hold his feet to the fire because now that I know what I know, you know, I can be like, Hey, I don't know. Would instructor Steve talk to you? You know, what would he say? You know, and I just kind of walk away. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. He can deal with that in his own head, but like, it, you know, it's nice. It's nice. I, I, um, he's definitely changed. He's definitely caused, um, what I say, what I've been talking about lately to, to our employees and our staff is like this ripple effect. Right. So like, he got plunked in the middle of the project and the ripple effect is still happening. Um, in a positive way. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Even six months later, even it sounds like how yeah. long have you been? I don't see it stopping. It, it's just going to keep in, It's going to keep multiplying is what it's going to keep doing. That's awesome. How long have yeah. you been open now? How long has the business been open? We opened January 18th. So we've only been open like three, four months, three and months. Where are you located? We're in Amherst, New Hampshire. Okay. So that, that takes some, some guts right there just to open a fitness business in this in this kind of crazy environment let me ask you opening up in the middle of lockdowns and quarantines and all this crazy you never know what's going to happen you can get shut down again and oh, the government yeah. restrictions all that Me members are afraid to come back in and be around other humans because humans are scary nowadays what how would you see the opening going had dave not gone through the project how would you see the business starting and kicking off any difference that you would think the business the the, the, the direction the trajectory of the business would have been if he didn't come to the project? So I think there would be um, more hesitation in, de in decision-making, meaning, well, I'll, I'll hold on to this and we'll wait and see. We don't have that luxury of waiting and seeing. So we just keep moving forward. So his attitude is like, keep moving forward, one foot in front of the other. We'll deal with it as it comes. We already had to shut down. Mm -hmm. um, once because of COVID and that is because Dave and I got the COVID, um, you know, so we had to maneuver, um, you know, our members through that experience and without, um, you know, Dave version 1.0 or whatever would have just said, ah, I don't care. Like we'll see in two weeks or whatever it, it, it would be. Um, but he was really just more engaged and more, he's very much like, let's just figure it out. Like, there's no, like, if I say, oh, we can't do that. He's like, we can, we just have to figure it out. So that's awesome. That's, that's actually yeah. something we, we talk about a lot in the project is we say FIO. That's sometimes the answer. FIO, figure it out. Don't come to me for the oh, answer. Yeah. That's total. Yeah. That's like his motto every day, I guess, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> which is awesome. great. Yeah. And, and now the business is obviously, we're still rolling, still running, still growing. How, how is the business going right now? It's going amazing. Like we're, you know, we're growing, 
and we're growing members and people are really picking up on the on the vibe of the place, the community that we're trying to build. Um, we really talk a lot about mindset with our members. It's not just coming in and, you know, hitting the mats for 30 minutes or whatever. Yeah. It's um, it's really about mindset. Um, so we talk a lot about that. So it's been nice that he's had this experience and he's been working so hard on himself. He does so much reading. He, do, you know, he's always listening to something, um, you know, so it's, it's just nice to see this side of him now. Like he's just working really hard to bring, um, you know, the best version of himself, I guess, to the business and to our family. So. That's freaking awesome. I actually just interviewed right before this, another, another one of the MDK wives there. And then they're also fit body owners here in California who in California, okay. the restrictions and shutdowns have been horrible. And she literally said that, you know, they're still thriving. And she literally said, if he had not gone to the project that they would have closed their doors months ago, they were a new business or only open about 18 months when all the shutdowns happened. And she literally said, if, if he didn't join the project, they would have shut the business down and closed their doors and would have been just horrible. So. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yep. Yep. I, I can see how they persevered. I can see it. That's, yep. that's awesome. So it made a huge impact. And so now seeing, you know, six months later and it's still getting better and better, he's still growing and developing. He doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Where do you see the, both your relationship with him, you know, on a personal side, your family, and then also the business as things, you know, down the, down the line in the future, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, as the, the ripple effect, as you said, from the project continues to just increase and, you know, become a force multiplier. Where do you see the future of your family and business down the line? So from a business perspective, you know, when you cause that ripple effect in someone where you can get them to look at themselves differently or try something differently or move them to something that they haven't, you know, even physically had to do, like we're dealing with clients that might not even have been able to do a push up, right? And now all of a sudden you've got them to that point. So the ripple effect there of just like not giving up on someone and really kind of being hard, but loving at the same time. Um, you know, is great. And I think a lot of those tools that he got from his experience at the project definitely come into play um, in, in helping our business. And then as far as family goes, again, for us, it was always, I just felt like um, volatile is not the right word, but it was very up and down. Like mm -hmm. we could, you know, again, and I'm, I'm equally at fault of this as well. It's just like when you're tired and you're raising kids and all of a sudden you're just like, you know, you just, you just get angry, you know, whatever, why aren't you listening? Why are you doing this? So it's really, um, a gut check every time I go to, for me and for him, you know, it's like this gut check of like, I would not talk to anyone else this way. Why would I talk to my kids this way? I would never bring up these emotions in, um, you know, any other setting. Why would I do it to my kids? So I think that there is a lot of, you know, that at play, which is we have, um, I'm dealing with a tween, right? So he's got a lot of emotions going on. And then we have an almost nine year old who has some social emotional issues going on and he keeps us in check. So I think that that piece of it has gotten better. Um, because if he can, if our son can see us communicating to each other right. and changing that dynamic and how we, um, talk to him, you know, eventually it's going to be okay. Right. So it's, it's not perfect, but every day we, we work on that. We work on our family and we do that as a team. And then as far as Dave and I, you know, um, he is very big into like, he came out of this and he's like, we need to, we need to make a date night. Like every week we need to, you know, you know, whatever, and I, connect and have a date. And believe me, I believe that, you know, but for me, I'm like, oh my God, we have 8 million things going on. I'm the one that's coming up with the excuses and he's trying to hold my feet to the fire saying, well, if we can't commit to one, one night, we need to commit every day to connect, whether that's five minutes or, you know, an hour, maybe we're watching a TV show, maybe we're having dinner together, you know, we can sit down, you know, so we, we put in that effort. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's because of him, because honestly, you know, as a mom that's doing 8 million things, again, all excuses, I, I, it's like, I'll push him off to the side because I got two other humans in the house I need yeah. to deal with. 
<laughs> so it's been great. Yeah. And then, you know, he, I see more belief in himself, um, just knowing that he can do it. And it's not ever that he really thought that he couldn't do it. It's honestly some of those blocks that he would come up is just pushing through. So in the end, that helps everything, whether it's our business, our family, our marriage. So he just knows that he can do it. That's awesome. So he's got just a, a confidence to always have and now almost a newer, higher level of confidence. Now going through what he went through in the project, realizing, all right, this, this regular stuff in the real world is now easy stuff compared to the crap they made me do over there. So that, that, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it's the, it's the mental game, right? It's the, what, how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others, um, that internal dialogue that you have, um, you know, it's all changing. And, and he will say out loud now, like I'm, I'm dealing with my inner bitch right now. And I'm like, well, go fix it. Like, I, I don't know, whatever was going on at the time. Like if you, if you need to go deal with that, go deal with that. <laughs> right. You know, so, but it's nice that he recognizes those voices in his head where yeah. before I think he was just like, I don't care, whatever. But now he's, he's, really into it. he's given to the inner bitch and now he's, you know, assassinating it temporarily until it pops up again. It's always going to pop up again, but he's it's not, having exactly. the awareness of it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. Some good stuff. So to close things out, where would you, what would you say to someone that's in your position that, you know, they know that this is probably something that their husband needs the way that you, you kind of saw it and you knew the exact specific areas that you hoped it would help and he would achieve out of it. But at the same time, they have kids, they have responsibilities. It's, you know, it's, it's considered an expensive program, a higher end program. You have a business and all this stuff going on. What would you say to that that woman out there who is going through exactly what you were, all those things jumbled together at the same time and is really hesitating, uh, you know, being on board with their husband doing this? So what, what would you say to the, someone in that situation? So I think um, for me, it was never um, not me being supportive. I was always supportive of the idea. For me, it definitely came down to finances, right? So like we're opening a business, the cash, we don't even have cash flow. Um, you know, at that point, it was like, we didn't really have any. Um, so I had to personally flip the script in my head that not look at, as it, at it like an expense, but an investment. Mm -hmm. So he is deciding to invest in himself, which ultimately is investing in the family. Like, like, I guess any, any wife or spouse could be like, all right, this is 75 hours of you going on, you know, like some boy trip or whatever. And, yeah. you know, whatever you're doing, like, a, I don't know, a tough mutter or something like that. That's what you're doing. And it's obviously it's not. Um, but I would encourage them to just um, think about it differently and how that ultimately is going to impact their family. Um, you know, the family, the marriage, you know, all of it. And then I would also say that if the wife is struggling in different areas of her life, like this helps them, this helps them. So if your spouse comes back and is like, Hey, these are, you know, I don't know. I don't have a good example, but if these are some areas that you're struggling in, like for me, it was about making time for myself or whatever, not feeling guilty about that or, you know, we all have heavy shit to deal with. Um, but like allow when your partner comes back to be, um, receive that coaching, I guess, and not take it like they're attacking you and that they're better than you. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, they just went through 75 hours of, you know, breaking down and, you know, being reborn. Right. So they have a lot of, um, you know, knowledge, I guess that they can, that they just want to share with you. And it's not, it's not an attack against your parenting style or you as a person. It's, we all want to come out and just be better people. So, you know, if your spouse comes to you and says, Hey, it's this much money, it's an investment. And, and again, the ripple effect is, you know, I'm not a finance person, but that's, you know, compounding interest down the, down yeah. the road. So it's, it's totally worth it. Um, and it's not easy to make those sacrifices as a, as a mom, of, you know, whatever you have going on, I recognize that it, it's not easy, but you just figure it out. It's 75 hours. They're back. 
you figure it out. And in the end of it, on the other side of it is a better version of your spouse. That's awesome. That's awesome. And let's just want to add this in on since it was finances was one of the bigger, bigger things that was kind of in your head, like how are we going to make this work? Six months later now, how do you see it? Let's just talk strictly financial. Obviously, you've had the personal and uh, the personal benefits from it that have helped your family and all that. Let's talk just strictly financially, you know, costing what it what it costs. You know, it's a twelve thousand dollar investment. Six months down the line, how has that been on an actual just dollar for dollar financial investment? Have you do you think it's paid itself back more? How, how do you see that as an actual financial investment, just finances alone? So financially, I will say so. Dave, not um, we don't we. He, we own the gym, but he is also in the, the mortgage world, the finance world. And he has had some of his best months and since he's 100% commission in his job. And he has had the best months, um, you know, since he's been back, like since December until now, he's had some really, really incredible months financially. Um, and I think that's because he just realized that like, it's not the whole work harder thing. It's just, I'm not going to spend time with people that are just not willing to make the investment in the process that we're going through. So, and, and that means it translates into dollars. If someone is, eh, he'll be like, all right, call me when you're ready versus he used to spend time trying to get these people to come on board for whatever, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it was. And now he's just like, I don't, I don't, it's not that he doesn't have time, but he recognizes how valuable his time is. And that, and that's a win. So freeing up those minutes or those hours in a day when you're dealing with someone that's maybe not all that invested, it translated into dollars for us. So now he was spending time with people that were committed. Um, so I, I think that that's pretty awesome. So, you know, we're still in the red for our gym, which is okay. We just, uh, we just opened, but we're, we're cranking right along, you know, things are moving and growing and, um, you know, so we're excited about that. And yeah, I just feel like he's not tying his, um, you know, I've mentioned earlier, he would tie his self-worth into what his paycheck is. Mm -hmm. It's not about that anymore. Like he sort of turned that inner dialogue with like, uh, how am I helping people today? That's how he approaches everything. Like, who am I going to help today? Um, who's ready to be helped. Um, and so if you can get that going in your brain, then um, the money flows. It just, it just will, um, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but I don't know, it just, it's working. Whatever, whatever happened over there in California, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Whatever happened over there is working. That's what we wanted to hear. Perfect. All right, so Wendy, I want to thank you again for joining us on this episode of the MDK Live Show, and you and David are part of the Project Family. If you ever need anything, just reach out anytime you have, have an army of hungry, successful, motivated, civilized savages all over the country and all over the world as a support system for you and for him. So if you ever need anything, just let me know. We are here for you. Thanks again for joining thank us you. on the show. Thank uh, you. If out there, viewers, if this, if anything in this show, you know that yourself, your spouse is something in here that they need to hear, just share this video, put a like and a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you need anything, let's talk about it. Let's jump on the phone and see if your spouse will be a good fit for the MDK project. That is the project. And I will talk to you later, Wendy. Thanks again. You are freaking awesome. I will talk How to you How are you? Soon. <laughs> All no right. excuses. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.